Easter is a time for renewal, rebirth, and hope. It's also a time for family, friends, and good food. We started off our day with a breakfast of fried bake and buljol, inspired by our Easter morning trips to Nana's house back in the days. I shared our menu on social media, but we had a few changes. Made these delicious wings with a buffalo sauce, vibrant Turkish-inspired salad, Asian stir-fry shrimp, and a Turkish rice with a secret ingredient. Lamb sauté with fresh tomatoes, oregano, a cassava oil down, macaroni pie, stewed fish, boiled plantains, and Nana's fried potatoes. Mummy helped with the stewed fish. Today I'll share a couple of these recipes, so if you're interested in learning some of these or seeing how this meal came together, let's start cooking! I started cooking a little after 9 a.m. and planned to serve our late lunch at 2 p.m. There was a lot to get done, so let's get started. Filming was also a last minute idea that really set me back on time, so I hope you find this video useful. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Let's start with the lamb. I added a few plugs of olive oil, added one whole chopped onion, and I'll cook it until it becomes golden brown. While that's becoming golden brown, I chopped up a green bell pepper. Whenever we order in Turkish food, I always get the lamb saute. It's really delicious and this recipe is inspired by all those lamb sautés I ate over the years. And I do recall that the bell peppers were green and were cut this small, so that's what I'm doing right now. Next I'll add in about two pounds of chopped tomatoes. I'll give it a stir. You can definitely add more tomatoes. My husband did say that he thinks that the lamb sauté had more tomatoes. So please feel free to add more. This is all the tomatoes I had. Next, I added about 12 cloves of garlic, chopped. Another good stir, and then I added in some chopped oregano. You know I like growing my own herbs, but oregano is something that hasn't been successful um, growing inside my house. I'll add in the fresh oregano as well as the dried oregano. If you don't have fresh oregano, you can certainly use only dried oregano. I've added about four tablespoons of dried oregano to the pot. A little disclaimer, this is not a traditional lamb sauté recipe or authentic. I'm just creating this from memory. This is just my version and it's really delicious, so trust me on this. I cooked it for about five to seven minutes and now that the tomatoes are tender and everything has melded together, I'll add in the lamb. This is about three and a half pounds of lamb chops that I cut into small pieces. I seasoned it with two tablespoons of green seasoning and two tablespoons of minced garlic. If you need a recipe for green seasoning, I'll leave the link above and below. And if you think it's too much trouble to make green seasoning just to use two tablespoons, then you can certainly eliminate it. Once all those ingredients are properly combined, we'll cover it, lower the heat and allow it to cook for about 30 minutes, checking every 10 minutes. I also made some honey buffalo wings. I already or recently shared that recipe with you, so I'll also leave that link below. I assembled the macaroni pie the day before, and now I'm bringing it to room temperature before I put it in the oven. These hot cross buns were amazing as well. Link below if you're interested. I did a little advanced prep. I seasoned the fish for the stewed fish. This is about five pounds of fish that cost 100 US, and I also seasoned the shrimp ahead. Seafood is very expensive around Easter time. It's time to check on the lamb and now I'll add the chopped bell peppers. I usually add lemon juice as well to the lamb but today I, I did not. In the printable recipe I'll add all the variations. Hi Bixby, show me the timer please. 20 minutes left on the timer. So it's been cooking about 40 minutes. We cover and cook another 20 minutes. Now the major part of the lamb is done and that's under control. I'll start boiling the potatoes, bananas, fried potatoes. This recipe only requires one ingredient to cook, so stay tuned for that. Set the timer for 30 minutes, please. Timer 03 for 30 minutes, starting now. Boil until tender but still firm and not falling apart. Once the dish for the macaroni pie has come to room temperature, we'll place the macaroni pie in the oven. I use a good quality cheddar cheese for the inside of the pie and top it with mozzarella. It was really, really delicious. Now back to the lamb. I allowed the lamb to cook in its own juices, as you will see, low and slow for about an hour. And now I'm finishing off with some ground cumin. Cumin and lamb go really well together. 
know I love cooking with fresh herbs so a bunch of parsley goes in. If you don't have parsley, cilantro or scallions would work. My mom is giving it its final taste test and she says that it will go great with my paratha. She and my sister are big fans of my paratha roast. Mm -hmm. Now that we've cleared the lamb away and a burner is available, I'll start on the rice. Washing about 5 cups of Turkish rice, you will always find a link to the ingredients I use on my blog under the recipe. A couple of tablespoons of butter and I'm using my expensive French butter today because it's a special occasion. Add one onion. Two tablespoons minced garlic. And the secret ingredient used in Turkish rice is orzo, which is technically a pasta. I ran upstairs to find my printable recipe for this because I've made it a couple of times, but I couldn't find it. My computer deleted it. Then I realized that I needed to cook the orzo first because if I cooked it with the onions, the onions will not get a chance to brown. And I had already added the garlic and the garlic would burn. So I started all over. The key is to cook the orzo until it's brown, just like if you were cooking the vermicelli for a wine. I left my niece in charge of stirring the orzo while I checked on the fish. The first step in mommy's stew fish recipe is frying the seasoned fish. Fry it until it's about 80% done with a light golden brown color. Let's head quickly back to the kitchen before we need to start again. Just in time, now I'm going to add back in the onion and the garlic, the fried onion and the garlic. I'm going to stir that in quickly because the orzo is already at a perfect color. Orzo is responsible for that nice toasty flavor. There aren't a lot of ingredients in this, but the few ingredients are key. Next, I'll stir in the washed rice. If you could only smell this right now, it's heavenly. If you're wondering why I love Turkish food so much and I, there's so much influence in this Easter menu, well, my kids went to a private Turkish school when they were younger for a couple of years. So I fell in love with the Turkish culture. Next, I'll add chicken stock. And I usually add about 1.5 cups of stock for every cup of rice. You can use veggie stock or water in place of the chicken stock to keep it vegetarian. Let's head back outside to see what's going on with the fish and I'm passing my best friend over here. Hey buddy. How you doing buddy old pal? You okay? My niece has been helping with the filming on the cell phone as well as with the camera. Everything's coming together nicely and I know my mom is in control here so I don't need to delegate or supervise. And the husband is helping with the peeling of the potatoes. Once the water has been absorbed and you see the rice at the top, it's time to cover and lower the heat. I'll move it to my smallest burner and I'll cook for about 20 minutes. Next, I'll start with the cassava oil down. I've added a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to the pot. I'm also adding butter. You can call this butter cassava if you want to. Once the butter has melted, I'll add in the chopped ingredients that includes onion, garlic, celery, bell pepper, and scallions. Maybe probably a couple of leaves of culantro in there as well. And this is a ground green seasoning that I made. Bandania, more garlic and hot pepper. In goes the cassava and this is frozen cassava that we found in the freezer section of the supermarket. All we had to do was give it a good rinse and cut it up into fairly big chunks. When preparing a small or large feast I always try to make it as efficient as possible. Meanwhile the pie has come out of the oven. I've mixed a can of organic coconut milk with enough water to make about six cups and then I'll add that to the cassava. Fresh coconut milk and cassava would be best but to save sanity and time, substitutions are generally acceptable. Once your food is well seasoned and cooked with love, nobody's going to know whether you used frozen cassava or canned coconut milk. Here's our simple Trinidad grapefruit juice. Mommy is prepping the okra or okra for the stewed fish. One cup ketchup, about three tablespoons green seasoning, three tablespoons minced garlic, 
One pound of okra, two large tomatoes, and one large onion and hot pepper. Then you're going to show this into it so you don't get a big splash up. Okay. Mm -hmm. The potatoes, bananas, fried potatoes, have been peeled and sliced, not too thin because it will break up in the pot. Then heat a little bit of butter in your frying pan and add the sliced potatoes and cook it or fry it until both sides are golden brown, crisp and delicious. Nana used that orange margarine that they use in Trinidad. It slips my mind at the moment. I've added oil to the pot and about a half cup of brown sugar. I'm going to allow it to froth, bubble, caramelize, expand and darken. It's smoking so we need to lower the heat. This is essentially browning being made. Now we're adding in the ketchup, the green seasoning. Some more water is going in the pot. Creating a nice flavorful base. Smells delicious. I'm gonna add in the tomato, the onion, the okra, and the hot pepper. Give it a stir. This is a brown stew fish. This is like the Jamaican brown stew fish. And this is a Trinidadian stew fish. All the islands have their similarities. We'll allow that to cook for a few minutes and then we'll add in the fish. The potatoes are nice and golden brown. It smells amazing. It's going to be absolutely delicious. We're going back outside to check on the fish. Salt to taste. Black pepper. Water there. That's it. This is In goes one can of coconut milk. Nice. I'm gonna take a taste. This one is not fitting properly here, so I'm gonna to give it a taste. So here's the oil down. It's really melted nicely. It's creamy, dreamy, smooth, rich, absolutely fantastic. Give it a taste. Oh, amazing. Just gonna add a little bit of salt and it's done. We're adding the head first. Why? Because I don't want it mixed up with, um, to be on top now. Okay. When you're taking it out, you just be careful. This one. Leave this piece, I'll eat this piece. Okay, good. It's for me. The cameraman is hungry. A few minutes. A few minutes? Yeah, come to the boil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's it. We're done. Trinidad style stewed fish. Indra style. Indra style stewed fish. Okay, that's that's it. it. The end. How to take it off? Take it off. What's happening to Leo? Leo was very comfy. What's happening, buddy? Okay. You relax. Happy Easter. We have one and a half English cucumber. Cucumber, cucumber, whatever you say. One green bell pepper. Okay, I'll continue cutting the bell pepper. Half red onion, because we ran out of red onion. Cherry tomato. Ready? 
chopped parsley, one scallion and three cloves of garlic minced. One tablespoon of oregano, quarter block of that feta cheese, more to taste, and just drizzle in olive oil and you're done. Nice and grainy and delicious. And here's my Asian stir fry shrimp. The shrimp was seasoned with garlic, ginger, scallion, soy sauce, sesame oil, and just stir fried in a pan until it changes color. And that's it. You're done. It's very simple. My mom absolutely loves the shrimp, which is why it's on the menu. Well, it's back to the kitchen to put everything in serving bowls, set the table, and do a major cleanup. And I still need to take a shower and get dressed. Plus take all the necessary videos and pictures because my sister has one rule that when she arrives there should be no taking of pictures, the food should be ready to be consumed. I also realized that I did not make the sauce for the wings. I'm running around putting that together in less than two minutes. At this point, I have no idea who's filming. It's either my daughter or my niece. I am now looking for the drinks to serve. This is where I ask for help to get everything on the table in less than 15 minutes. And my helpers are just my niece, my nephew, and my mom. The honey buffalo garlic sauce is on the wings. Serving dishes are getting lined up on the dinner table because it's very cold outside. We had hoped for a nice day, but that wasn't going to happen. The lamb has been warmed up and is now going into the serving bowl. Hot cross buns, Nana's fried potatoes, the boiled plantains are ready, the stewed fish is on the table, the lamb is on the table, the oil down is on the table, the macaroni pie that almost got burned is on the table but still very delicious, the callaloo. Our delicious vibrant salad. I just need to get the dressing in there. The wings have made it to the table as well. The shrimp looks amazing and the rice has been served in the same pot it was cooked in. And that's all there was to eat my sweet friends. Not as hectic or chaotic as the Thanksgiving prep video. If you haven't seen that video yet please go and check it out. I'll leave the link below and above. I couldn't wait to dig in and taste all the flavors that had been simmering for hours. As we enjoyed our Easter feast, we couldn't help but feel grateful for the opportunity to come together as a family and share in this special day. If you enjoyed being in the kitchen with us or learned something new, please give us a big thumbs up, leave a lovely comment below, share this video with your family and friends, and subscribe if you wish to see more. Until next time, stay safe, be well, cook, share, and love. Bye-bye. Esther, Daddy. Uh -huh. And her mom married, I married Friday and they got married on the Sunday. Oh, today.